Eagles producer Bill Simzik gave Bob Seger his only number one album, and it was a great record, too. We talk about Against the Wind on Rocky Street Music. Uh, Bob Seger, you, you know, uh, he had recorded a lot of albums and had his breakthrough by the time Against the Wind came out. Uh, those two previous albums, uh, right. Night Moves and Stranger in Town. What was it like? I mean, he was firmly planted at that point. Uh, in the pop world, in the rock world, what was it like making that album with him? It was it was a lot of fun because well, first of all, I, I got to know him through Glenn because they you know grew up together in Michigan, and I'm also a Michigan guy, so we all we all had that in common. And 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 Bob said, you know, we got to work together someday, and so that someday came, and uh, I did. I only I think I only did like four cuts on the album and you know, he, he was another one with different producers. He liked uh, Barry Beckett down in uh, Muscle Shoals and, and he would produce, he, Bob would produce with, with uh, Punch Andrews as manager. They would, you know, produce some. So I did my four and, and you know, thank God uh, Against the Wind was one of them and it was his, you know, only number one album. That's uh that blows my mind right there. <laughs> and that's, it's a similar lane to me. Uh, I mean, he gave Glenn, you know, what was it? Ramble, what was it? Ramblin' Man or Ramble? Uh, he gave, he, he had Glenn play on right, that. Ramblin' Man. Yes, right. thank you. I should know better. Oh, the who? Ramblin' Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you, can, you can really hear Glenn on that too. That's the thing. You oh, can yeah. hear him. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> with uh, with B.B. King, I remember. Well, you 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 knew who he was. You heard him on the radio, and then f- was there a moment when you actually started working with him that you that you checked in and said, "Wait a minute!" Like all the things that had to happen for me to be in this room to be with this man. Um, did you ever have a moment like that with him, considering how big he was? Um, I don't think I ever had a moment like that. Like like a you know everything led to this moment, but. I'll tell you one thing, when uh, when Why I Sing the Blues made it to the pop charts and uh, he hadn't been there ever, that was when I knew, okay, maybe I'm onto something here. <laughs> and and then the next year, the thrill is gone, you know, we pretty much put him out of, out of the Chitlin circuit and into the big room in Vegas. So it was a beautiful thing. So was it hard to get him to sort of, I mean, first there was the thing about you you using half of his band and half of like was that hard for him to say to say maybe you should branch out a little bit more no he that was his way of uh, i'm not sure about what you're talking about when i first laid my idea out that i wanted i wanted to record him with uh, a mixed race group of you know rock and blues music or not really blues more r&b i wanted to put him with an r&b rhythm section and and uh, and, a, and a rock guitar and rock piano, and he said that sounds interesting, but let's do it half and half. So I mean that's that's the live and well portion of it, and then after why I sing the blues hit the hit the uh, pop charts as well as like top ten R and B, he uh, he said okay, let's do it your way all the way next time, and that was completely well when it was uh, the thrill is gone was on. And the strings, what about the get it? Was that a difficult thing? Because that's mentioned in a lot of interviews and a lot of things about you. Uh, how did you approach coming up with telling him that? I called Asking. him at three in the morning <laughs> after we did the session. And it was like, and everybody had gone home and I was listening to all the takes. And and I thought, wow, strings would be good on here because I'd been, I'd done a whole bunch of R&B dates as, as an engineer and strings and horns around everything, you know, all just about all of them. And I thought, well, that would fit here perfectly. So I called him up and woke him up and said, and gave him my ID. And he said, well, I'll, I'll listen to that, you know. So about a week later, I booked the string session and obviously B came in. And the first rundown, I'm, I'm sneaking glances at him, you know, sitting on the side of the control room and he's smiling. And I went, all right, I scored. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who, what kind of a guy were, cause I wouldn't have the chutzpah to do that. I mean, in any way, there's a part where I became comfortable in what I do that I, uh-huh. I, I found my voice and I'm going, this is the type of broadcast I'm going to be. I'm not apologetic about it. This is who I am. But <laughs> I can't imagine a world where I'd be producing and I don't do that. BB King, <laughs> where I'd be, what, uh, 
Who was Bill Simzik back then? How would you describe him? Um, oh, geez, how would I describe him? <laughs> if he you were was, looking at him right now, what would you say? Uh, yeah, 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 you lucked out, dude. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> I really don't know how to answer that, to yeah. be honest with you, John. I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's hard. It's a long, long time ago, and I was full of piss and vinegar, and uh, I, you know, I'm going to make it. You know that that whole thing. Uh, going back to BB King, to you, sir, BB King was. How do you describe him from your point of view? The king of the blues. I mean that that says it all right there. I mean, literally when it, when that when the my antenna hit the bed spring and I was like fifteen years old and I heard I don't know three three o'clock the three o'clock blues or something I forget which one it was and uh, it was like oh that's entirely different than anything I've ever heard in my life. I was growing up in Western Michigan, which was really white bread, <laughs> and the local radio station played Eddie Fisher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. It was right. a whole new world. <laughs> We're going to have a lot more from Bill Simzik coming up tomorrow. Every day for the next about a week and a half, we'll have a different clip from Bill. If you're a Patreon member, you'll have access to all the clips early. There'll be links in the description where you can join our Patreon. If you want to support the channel in other ways, there are links there as well. You can make a PayPal donation. But really, like our videos, share our videos, comment on them, subscribe to the channel. Spread the word for us. We'd appreciate that. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.